All right, we're up to part four of chapter one PowerPoint. Um, so we're now getting into the sig fig rules. Basically, this chart uh, tells us which, when we look at a number, which digits are going to be counted as significant figures and which ones are not significant figures. Okay, so the way it's set up in this chart, the blue ones are the ones that are significant figures, the red ones are not sig figs. So when I look at it, if I write a number down like 168.968, any non-zero digit that you write down is counted as a sig fig. It has to be, okay? Otherwise, if you, if you didn't mean to write it down, then you shouldn't have written it down. You gotta be careful about that. Now, where it gets a little messy is when I think about the zeros. The zeros are the ones that, I, they're like three different cases where I have to decide whether a zero is significant or not. Well, the first one's the easiest. If a zero is in between two non-zero digits, so like, 404, the zero in the middle has to be significant. Because I know the non-zero digits are significant and from the first sig fig to the last sig fig, everything in between has to count. So they're all significant, okay? So that's called a trapped or captured zero. They're always significant values. Now, if I have a zero at the end of a number, and when I say at the end, we always read from left to right, so the end is on the right. If I have a zero on the right, it will be significant if there's a decimal present in the number. Okay, now, let's just say I have 12.00. The zeros are on the right side of the number. There is a decimal in the number. I said 12.00, so those zeros do count. Okay, what about if I say the number 5,000? You write down five zero zero zero. If you don't write a decimal, then the zeros to the right of the five don't count as sig figs. Now they're placeholders, meaning they're still important because if those zeros weren't there, five is not the same as 5,000. So the zeros are there to make sure that the five is in the thousands position. So they're placeholders, but they're not sig figs. So I can write the number 5,000 with no decimals, that's one sig fig. I can write the number 5,000 point, and that would be three sig figs. So let me do that. So 5,000, just the number 5,000, that's one sig fig. 5,000 point, a zero to the right of my non-zero number, if the decimal is present, they're significant. So that's going to be four sig figs. So then what if I was working a problem and I decided I needed to have three sig figs? Well, without the decimals one, with the decimals four, how do I do three? Well, the answer is I need to go to scientific notation. If I go to scientific notation, I can record this number as five times 10 to the third, 5.0 times 10 to the third, 5.00 times 10 to the third. In scientific notation, I have complete control over how I write the number. And if I want three sig figs, then I would write 5.00 times 10 to the third. That would be the one that matches up with what I need, okay? So when I write a number down, I have to be thinking about that, like how many digits do I want? And then that determines how I write it down, okay? So, um, and that, that's the next one. Any digit that I write down in scientific notation is automatically going to be significant. Scientific notation, you have complete control. So if you didn't want to write it down, then you shouldn't have written it down in the first place. Okay, so those are my sig figs. Now, the ones that are not significant. Well, I just said zeros to the right are significant if there's a decimal. They're not significant if there's no decimal. So if they're just being used as placeholders in a large number, like I said for 5,000 up here, if there's no decimal there, then those zeros, you assume they're rounded off. So basically 5,000, it's like uh, they, there's some value, they rounded it to 5,000 and it's, it's rounded to the nearest thousand. So it could have been 4,672. And they said round it to the nearest thousand, you round it to 5,000. So the hundreds position, the tens position, and the ones position were all rounded off. 
So none of them are accurate. Okay, that's what it means if it's only one sig fig, the first position. Now, so that's that one. The last one we haven't talked about is what about the numbers, the zeros that are on the left side? So what if I have 0 0.0045? In that case, again, they're placeholders. They're not significant because the zero in front of the decimal, I said 0 0.0045, the zero in front of the decimal is irrelevant. Some people like to put the number, the zero in front. Some people don't. I usually don't. But whether you put it there or not doesn't change the number at all. Okay. But then when you had the decimal and then you said zero, zero, four, five, the first two zeros right there are only there so that the four goes in the thousandths position. So they're there to hold the place so that when I write the four down, it's in the thousandths position. That's my first sig fig. And then the five is my second sig fig. So all the numbers before the four are just placeholders. Okay? So those are our rules. Trap zeros always count. Zeros to the right count if there's a decimal anywhere in the number. And zeros to the left never count. It is, to, it is not to the left of the decimal. It's zeros to the left of the first non-zero number. Okay? So it's always based on the first sig fig which is always a non-zero number. So that brings us to if we are going to do a calculation. So first lab that you guys have to do, um, well actually the first lab um, is going to be a set of worksheets where you're just doing math problems, a lot of it's sig figs and unit conversions and stuff like this. It's all about chapter one. The second lab that you're assigned is the first actual experiment. And you're gonna find the density of water several times, okay? So now when I, I video myself collecting the data, you're gonna to have to write all the data down. But what you're gonna to have to do is, I've, I got the mass for you, I got the volume for you, and you're gonna divide the mass by the volume to get the density. When you do that, you're gonna to have to look at how many digits the mass has, how many digits the volume has, and when you divide them, your calculator is gonna give you an answer but it's going to have like all kinds of places after the decimal and you're going to have to decide at what point do I round off and how many digits do I write down. Okay. So when your calculation is multiplication or division, there's a rule that you follow where your final answer is going to have the same number of sig figs as the measured value. You know, you have your mass and your volume. Those are your two measured values. When you divide those two numbers, Whichever one has fewer sig figs, that tells you how many sig figs the answer should have. So if I have a number with four sig figs divided by a number with three sig figs, the answer should only have three sig figs. So then you look at your answer. And let's just say your answer was 0.04326689. So your calculator told you that. If we decide that we need three sig figs, so I gotta look at this and go to the first sig fig is the four, because remember zeros to the left don't count. Four, three, two, so I'm gonna round it off right there after the two, but the next digit is a six, so I'm just gonna round up. I would write down 0 0.04327, excuse me, no, 0 0.04337, three, three. the six rounds up to make a three. So that would be the number I would write down, 0 0.0433. All right, so that's multiplication division. Then if I'm doing adding and subtracting, same idea, but if you were gonna do a addition or subtraction problem in like elementary school, the first thing you do, like if it was 12.2 minus 6.5, is you would stack the numbers and you would line up the decimals. And when you line up the decimals, you have to make sure that you subtract the tenths minus the tenths and the ones minus the ones and the tens minus the tens and all that kind of stuff. Everything has to be lined up just right. That's how this rule works, is that if you look at the numbers that are being added and subtracted, if you line them up above each other, the one that has fewer decimal places, that's the one that you're gonna cut off, okay? That's gonna tell you where to cut the final answer off. So it's gonna, the final answer will have the same number of decimal places as the measured value that had fewer. 
Okay, we'll see that on the next slide. But with multiplication division, we're looking at the one with fewer sig figs. With adding and subtracting, we're looking at the one that has fewer decimal places. There is a difference, okay? Now, the trick with this is, as you go through 1211, 95% of the things you do are gonna be multiplication and division. And you're gonna learn that rule really well. Every once in a while, you're gonna have a problem pop up that has adding and subtracting in it, and you're gonna forget this rule. And when you forget this rule, it's gonna make you miss a problem because of it, okay? Now, specifically, this is the most important in lab. When you go to lab, the first, first few labs especially, if you don't pay attention to the sig figs when you do cal your calculations, um, you're gonna lose a point every time you mess it up, and it'll take a lab where you knew what you're supposed to do with all the experiment part, but if you mess up the sig figs, it's gonna change your grade from a 95 to a 75, just because of sig figs, okay? And actually, the other thing is units. Every time you write down a number in a lab, it has to have the right number of sig figs, and it has to have the right units beside it. All right, so if I'm looking at this one, uh, and it's just practicing problems, if I type in my calculator, 12.0 divided by 6.0. My calculator is very good at getting the answer, but it doesn't know how to report the answer. It's just gonna give you the best answer it can, and then you have to decide what to do with it. So if you type that in your calculator, your calculator is gonna give you a single value, it's just gonna say two. And if you wrote that as the answer for this problem, you would be wrong. Because sig figs, this, the first number has three sig figs, the second number has two sig figs, so when I divide them, my answer should have two sig figs. So if I, my answer, my calculator says it's exactly two, I have to know I need to add one more digit after that, so it's gonna be 2.0. That would be the correct answer for that problem because I need to maintain two sig figs in my final answer. So sometimes your calculator is gonna give you all the decimal places and you gotta decide where to chop it off. Sometimes your calculator is gonna chop it off and you need to add more decimal places. It can go either way. And a lot of times people forget about that. All right, so what about if I do 12.0 plus 6.0? At that point, if I add them together, 12.0 on top, 6.0 on the bottom. If I get confused, if I applied the rule we did up here, I would think I have to round it to two sig figs, but that's not right. I want to round based on, if it's adding, I'm going to round based on decimal places. If both numbers have one decimal place, then when I add them together, I should keep one decimal place. I want to be consistent with my decimal places. So that one's going to end up being 18.0. Alright, what about 9.0 plus 2.65. So if you type that one in your calculator, your calculator is going to say 11.65 is your answer. But that is not the right answer. Again, with adding, I'm going to go with the one that has fewer decimal places. The first number only had one decimal place. So if it's 11.65, I only want to keep one decimal place. So it's going to be 11.6 but then the five rounds up, it's gonna make it 11.7. So the answer to that one should be 11.7. Finally, this one, 1 1.2 times 5.87 divided by 4.85 times 2.468. Basically, you can punch this in your calculator. Um, be careful about your parentheses and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you divide by 4.85 and then multiply by 2.468 but don't use parentheses, it's going to mess it up. Uh, but the answer, I'm going to type it in. I got 0 0.58848 and then some more digits. I look at this though, everything here is multiplying and dividing. So I know that the one that has the fewest sig figs is the first number, it only had two sig figs. So my answer needs to be rounded to two sig figs. So I would write down either 0.59 or 0 0.59. Either of those would be okay. Again, whether you put the zero in front of the decimal or not is just a personal choice. And then finally, the last one of these, 
this is a problem that really messes people up because it has a subtraction going on first and then a division. Whenever you switch your type of operation from adding to subtracting to multiplying and dividing or vice versa, you have to do the rounding by the right rule before you switch. So in this one, order of operations, add to what's in the parentheses first. So I'm going to do the 22.5 minus 16.3. And when I subtract, I actually get 6.2. I'm only going to keep one decimal place. So when I subtracted, I actually lost a sig fig. I went from having three sig figs in both of them to only having two in the top. So I have 6.2 as the answer to the top. I divide that by the 18.55. And that gives me, again, my calculator gives me a long answer, but I know that the top should have only had two sig figs. The bottom had four sig figs. So my answer is only going to have two sig figs, which that's going to leave me with 0 0.33 as my answer. If you just looked at the numbers initially, most students would think it's supposed to be three sig figs, but they would be wrong because they didn't do the, the subtraction first and then round it and then go to the multiplication and division. All right, so that's where we're going to leave off for this video. We'll pick up again.